Volcanic arcs are the byproduct of subduction zones around the world. They host violent explosive volcanic eruptions, but along with this they also deposit vast mineral wealth into the fractured bedrock, with many volcanic arcs containing significant quantities of gold, copper, silver, lead, and other metals. The reason volcanic arcs form is due to the subducting plate. When an oceanic plate collides and descends beneath a continental plate, water is introduced into the mantle in two ways. By the subducting slab dragging oceanic water down with it, and by the release of water from water saturated rocks when they reach a specific depth, where the heat and pressure force them to undergo metamorphosis. When water is introduced into the mantle, it lowers the melting point and induces partial melt as a result. Minerals become sequestered and concentrated. They are sweated out, so to speak, from the subducting slab, and the magma and fluids that are released begin to travel upwards due to buoyancy, utilizing the faults and fractures that subduction inevitably creates to ascend where they can become deposited into the bedrock. This is one of the few ways that volcanic arcs deposit minerals into the land. In northern Queensland, an ancient volcanic arc that formed 298 million years ago during the early Permian exists in the northern part of the Bowen Basin. These volcanics were formed during a subduction event, and they outcrop in various areas. We have a high degree of mineralization in some of these areas, with copper, silver and gold occurrences. Other areas, however, are completely devoid of mineralization. On geological maps, the Lizzie Creek Volcanic Group is represented by a light blue color. Its formation began when the Oceanic Paleo-Pacific Tectonic Plate subducted beneath the continental Indo-Australian Plate giving birth to volcanoes and major earthquakes. These volcanoes were tremendously explosive in their magnitude, with the release of rhyolite and rhyodacite being pronounced. And we have the later formation of a back arc basin in an area where the land was stretched. This is known as the Bowen Basin in present day. This basin deformed a Lizzie Creek volcanic arc in certain areas, and we have other intermingling volcanics that joined the Lizzie Creek in erupting during the early Permian and it overlaid it in certain parts, such as the Mount Toussaint Volcanics and the Strathbogie Trachyte. We also have a group called the Mount Wickham Rhyolite on the westernmost border of the arc, where the aforementioned later deformation occurred. It appears as though the stretching of the land occurred in a later part of the Permian, after this volcanic arc had existed for over 40 million years, spewing out explosive and effusive eruptions. What's really cool is, under magnetics, we can see massive dikes or veins that were emplaced by hydrothermal waters and by magmatic processes. Look at the linear lines that exist so abundantly throughout the region on magnetics. It's possible that these dikes or veins might contain high mineralization in areas and yield an abundance of gold, silver, copper, and other commodities. The red lines that you see on the geological map represent them, and they are numerous and quite widespread in places. Right alongside the Lizzie Creek Volcanic Arc are numerous major intrusive rocks like the Thunderbolt Granite. This would have been the fuel source for the volcanoes in the Lizzie Creek Complex, and they have been uplifted to the surface. In present day, the mineralization that occurred in the Lizzie Creek Volcanic Arc occurs most abundantly in the Mount Carlton area. It's only now that we're really beginning to drill into the earth to see if any significant copper or gold deposits exist. Significant is the key word here. There are former prospects that uncovered gold, silver and copper in the region, but they have been small scale and the yields haven't been great enough for small scale miners. This is typical of volcanically emplaced gold, which as opposed to orogenic gold, doesn't contain the high yields one might expect or hope to see. But volcanic gold is normally concentrated in certain areas, due to a process known as magmatic differentiation. Magmatic differentiation occurs as magma rises through the Earth's crust. As it does, different minerals crystallize out of the magma at different temperatures. The result is a concentration of valuable minerals like gold, copper and silver in certain places. This can lead to extremely high yields if the right place is drilled that contains a deposit that was in place by magmatic differentiation. The result is a bounty of gold or other metals. Open pit mines are often used to extract these minerals. The Lizzie Creek Volcanic Arc is one of many examples of these kinds of volcanic remnants. Ancient volcanic arcs are scattered all over Australia, speaking to the many different tectonic events the country has undergone throughout time. So this is the story of a once mighty volcanic arc, 
that eventually died off and left behind the remnants and riches from the time when it roared to life, to the point where the magma finally cooled. Thanks for watching.